Today we're going to be talking about limits. We're going to be graphing some functions. We're going to be changing the values on the x-axis that are input into the function. If I make this change on the x-axis, what is the result on the y-axis vertically? Let's look at the function 1 over x. If I plug in 2, I get a half. Plug in 3, I get a third. As the x gets bigger and bigger, the y value gets smaller and smaller. If I plug in a million, I get a millionth. As x increases, the y value decreases down towards zero. The way we say this in limit notation is that the limit as x approaches infinity of the function 1 over x is equal to zero. Remember that infinity is not a number. It's something I approach. The arrow means approaches. Now let's take the limit as x approaches zero from the right. You can see I put a little plus here. The x's are going to approach zero from the right using positive numbers and all these guys over here on the left I don't care about these guys. As I plug in x values they get smaller and smaller on the x-axis. If I plug these values into the function I get bigger and bigger and bigger results. In fact my results are unbounded. I can always choose a number so small that the result will be arbitrarily big. The limit as x approaches 0 from the right of 1 over x is infinity as evidenced by this table of numbers over here. As as the x's get smaller, the height goes up to infinity. Now let's consider the limit as x approaches 0 from the left side. We can actually use the work we've already got written down here. Negative a half, negative a hundredth, negative a millionth. My result will be negative 2, negative 10, negative 100, negative a million. These results are approaching negative infinity. So the answer here is negative infinity. And we can draw the result on the graph. As x approaches 0 from the left, the graph should go down to negative infinity. You should try the last one. As x approaches negative infinity, the height of the graph goes to 0. What we mean by the limit as x approaches a may be from the right with the plus or maybe from the left of a function. That is equal to what the height of f of x approaches as x approaches a. Let's look at another example. The first question here is how do I graph this function? Let's do a few little side sketches. This is 1 over x. If I replace x goes to x minus 3, the graph is going to be shifted to the right three units, something like that. Multiply times 2 amplifies the height of the function times 2. It's a little taller. By taller on the negative side, I mean more negative. This is scratch work. What does the height of this function do as the x values approach 3 from the left? The answer here is that the height of the function goes down to negative infinity as x approaches 3 from the left. Remember in the last example we calculated a few numbers on the side. We want to emphasize these two different methods as helpful. Sometimes I know exactly what the graph looks like and I can look at the graph and figure out what the limit is. Other times maybe the function's too complicated. I don't know what the graph looks like. So I also want to be able to compute a few examples of listing numbers. 2.5 that's definitely to the left of 3. I get negative a half in the denominator, flip it upside down, multiply the 2 and the 2, and I get minus 4. If I do another one, 2 divided by 2.9, notice that that is also to the left of 3, but closer to 3 than 2.5. 2 divided by negative 1 tenth, flip it over, multiply by 2, I'm getting 20 here. What is to the left of 3, but even closer to 3 than 2.9? Let's try 2.9. 0.999. I get 2,000. As the x values get plugged in, the y values plummet down to negative infinity. So there's two different ways that I'm verifying. One is graphically, and the other by calculating stuff, actually plugging in numbers that are approaching 3 from the left. Either way, we get the same answer. Let's do another limit with the same function, same graph. And this time, I'm approaching negative infinity. My x values are going to go whoop, this way to negative of infinity. So remember that there's two different ways of doing the limit by looking at the graph. What does the height of the function do as the x values go to negative infinity? What I'm going to do instead the numerical method. I'm plugging in x is equal to negative 7 minus 10 because I picked a clever number. So this gives me negative 0.2. 
let's pick a bigger, more negative number to plug in. I'm going to stick with my clever choices. Negative 97, and I get minus 0.02. Let's plug in something even bigger. 9997 nine, nine, with a minus sign. That is a number that's even bigger. Calculate away. Okay, so we can see as a trend that as I plug in numbers that are more and more negative with big magnitudes, the result that pops out of the function gets smaller and smaller and smaller. You can also see that the height of the function approaches zero. Okay, and we're seeing that in these numbers. You can see the trend. If you calculate another one, you'll get even closer to zero. The value of this limit is zero. Let's just take a minute and recap what we did. We've got the same function appearing in the first two examples, but the x values are approaching different places, right? And that gives us different results. Same thing over here. Got a single function, x values are different, and the result is different. So these are the little details you got to pay attention to when you're doing limits. Where am I approaching? What is the function? And then the next question would be, what method do I want to use? We talked about two methods for how to figure out a limit, the graphical method and the numerical method. For any given problem, you should be able to use one or both of these in order to verify your result. Let's try another example. Our goal here is to take the limit as x approaches zero of this function, where this function has the piecewise definition here. I'm not sure what the graph of this function looks like immediately. The second part here says that the height of the function is five if x is equal to zero, and the first part up here applies whenever x is non-zero. So let's plug in some values just for graphing purposes. I get one cube divided by the absolute value of one, which which is 1. Plug in 2, I get 2 cubed divided by the absolute value of 2, which is 4. Each time the denominator cancels with the numerator and then I'm just left with x squared. But if the x values are negative, something else happens. Plugging in some more, I get negative 8 in the numerator divided by positive 2, which is minus 4. The x values are positive, the function looks just like x squared. And if the x values are negative, the function looks just like like negative x squared. Before I graph it, let's just write that down. So after plugging in some numbers, I see that this is probably a better representation of the function. It's easier to draw than the original formulation over here. So let's throw this one away because we already figured out that this one is better and now we can draw 5 if x equals 0, positive x squared if x is greater than 0, and negative x squared if it's less than 0. Now that we have this nice picture, let's address the question, what happens to the height of the function as x approaches 0? Notice that I didn't say whether I should approach from the right or from the left. When the plus minus is omitted, we always mean approach from both directions. If the x values approach zero, the height of the function also approaches a height of zero. So our limit here is zero. Notice that this is different from the actual height of the function at zero. f of zero is equal to five. That's not the limit that we were taking. This information right here is actually completely irrelevant. When I'm taking a limit, I only consider as x approaches zero from both sides. Everything about a limit is all about approaching. What does the height approach? As x approaches zero, the height certainly does approach zero, although it doesn't get there or it doesn't attain the height of zero. So the limit is still zero here even though the actual height of the function is five. Remember, if we replace x by x plus three, that shifts the graph over to the left three units. Also, when we write square root, we always mean the positive square root. That's why I just drew the top half. Now if I consider what happens as the x values approach six, the question is what does the height of the function approach? I can test this out by plugging in values that are very close to 6. The first few values I'm plugging in are to the left of 6, getting closer and closer and closer to 6. You can see that the result is getting closer and closer to the square root of 9. Similarly, when I plug in numbers to the right of 6, getting really, really close to 6, the result gets closer and closer to the square root of 9. Either way, we find that both sides agree 
the limit as x approaches 6 of square root of x plus 3 is 3, or the square root of 9. In contrast to the previous case, where the height of the function did not agree in the previous example with our answer, here it does agree. f of 6 is equal to 3. But again, just because this is a coincidence, doesn't mean it's relevant. Whenever we take a limit, we're always talking about approaching 6 from the left, approaching 6 from the right. We are never ever talking about 6 itself if we're taking the limit as x approaches 6. That's what approaches means, means you approach, you're not equal to. So even though it's tempting to say that the reason why this is equal to 3 is because f of 6 is equal to 3, it's actually not true. Again, this information is irrelevant. Here's a function that looks almost the same, except it's piecewise. At x equals 6, the square root function is not applicable. So there's a hole in the square root part, and the actual height of the function is 2, given by this piecewise definition. But nonetheless, all of our computations on the previous slide actually still apply. As long as you're not equal to 6, the square root is applicable. So here we still have the fact that the limit as x approaches 6 of this function is indeed still 3, even though this one has a hole and the previous example didn't have a hole. Their results still agree because limits are all about approaching. What is the height of the function approaching as x's approach 6? I don't actually care what happens at x equals 6. So there you go. There's a basic introduction to limits, and we'll see you in class.